This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? In this video, I want to talk a little bit about something that I don't talk that much about on this channel, and that is web design. So I want to talk about, give you some tips for effective web design, meaning the layout, the user interface, and so on. Um, so basically, I have 10 different tips that I want to go over that I think are really important when creating any kind of layout. All right, so we'll jump right into it. Number one is simplicity. I think that in web design, less is more. You don't want to clutter your page up. Um, you want it to be simple. You don't want too much text because people are very, very impatient. And if it's just too much to read, chances are they're going to just move on unless it's something that they absolutely need. But if they're just browsing your site, maybe comparing it with with some others that are similar, if there's too much text and it's it's just too much clutter, they're going to move on. Um, so just keep it simple. You want the most important stuff to be displayed above the fold um, and you just don't want to overload them with information. If you do have like, you know, a couple paragraphs that you would like to put on your site explaining what it is you do or whatever, put it on an inner page. Don't put it on the home page. So just try to keep things simple, simple and clean. So number two is consistency. You want to stay consistent across your entire site. And this has to do with typography, fonts, uh, you know, font families, font sizes. You don't want different size headings everywhere. Um, what else? Colors, of course, and I'll talk more about colors in a little bit, but you want to stay consistent. Uh, even the even the content of your site, you want you want that to stay consistent. The images, the style of images, um, just keep it all throughout the site consistent. So number three is readability. Obviously, this is very important. People need to be able to, to easily read your text on your website. This includes contrast. So I've seen I've seen this over and over, especially with people that submit portfolios and stuff like that, where they'll have a, a background image with the text over it. But the image is doesn't have an overlay or anything. The text is just it's pretty much blended in with the image and, and you don't want to do that. You want to have some kind of dark overlay over the image and then have the text over that so that you can clearly read the text. Um, same goes for just having a colored background. You don't want to have like a, a, a dark gray background with slightly lighter text over it. You know, you want it to be clear and, and have the text white if the background is dark, maybe dark in the background, lighten the text, have a good contrast. Other things that have to do with readability are spacing, you know, line height. You don't want your text all scrunched together. The font size, obviously, you don't want the font size to be too small. And just like I, I mentioned before, you don't want too much text because that takes away from readability. So number four is uh, responsiveness or, or uh, mobile compatibility. There's no excuse in, in 2019 and on your website or your application should definitely be at least viewable on on uh, mobile devices. It doesn't have to be perfect, but don't have the text go off the page or anything like that. Um, it's really not that difficult to do. You know, use if you use CSS grid with media queries, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you also have frameworks like Bootstrap that are, are inherently responsive and mobile first. So there's really no excuse to not have a responsive site in 2019. So number five is simple navigation. Navigation is is extremely important. Obviously, that's how people get around your site and they find different things that they need to. I'm a fan of of top nav bars for the main, you know, the main navigation and then maybe a sidebar for things like categories. If it's like a blog or a, co a content website or something like that, um, you can pull off a main side nav bar, but I'm, I'm a bigger fan of, of having it all at the top and then having it as a, a sticky nav so that when you, they scroll down, if you have a long page, you'll still have the navigation right there. So number six is having a purpose. All websites should have a purpose. It doesn't really matter what the niche is or anything like that. Um, there's there's a purpose for the person going to the site. And even if it's just like a small business brochure type of website and there's not really any functionality, the purpose is to convey you know, your services and your products and also contact. They should have a way to contact you. That's going to be, you know, 
uh, the purpose of the site is to get them to contact you to buy your services or products, whatever it might be. Um, which brings us to the next one, which is call to action. So it's very important to have a clear call to action. Like I said, if it's a brochure type website, then it's probably going to be a contact form. Um, so you generally want to keep your call to action above the fold, meaning that when they go to the site, the call to action is right there in their face. It could be a contact form. It could be an email uh, sign up, you know, email subscription sign up or whatever. It could be a, uh, uh, a registration form, it could be a purchase button, it could be whatever, whatever the main purpose of your website, that's what you want, you know, you're, you want that call to action, you want that visible right when they visit, right when they go to the site. So number eight is the color palette. I think colors are really important. Um, in many cases, you're going to have specific branding colors. So if you're doing a site for uh, a business, uh, they probably have a logo already and you have to kind of use those colors. So you can do that. Um, just make sure that the other colors you pick go well with that, that they, there's a good contrast. I typically like to use like a three color palette. I'll have maybe a, 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 a blue, a medium blue, and then choose a blue that's a bit lighter for the secondary color and then maybe another color that kind of goes well with it um, as a third color. Uh, but yeah, you do. You, and you also don't want to have colors that are way too bright, like fluorescent um, or gradients. Not I'm not a big fan of gradients. They make your website look like it's from the 90s. So just just very um, subtle, flat, you know, a flat look, flat colors uh, is what I would suggest. So number nine is load speed. You want your website to load fast. As I said, people are very impatient and they're not going to wait, you know, more than like uh, two seconds for your site to load. Um, so you definitely want it to, to optimize it. And a big culprit of this is usually images or video. So if you just upload like a, a 5000 pixel image and you don't compress it, you don't do anything with it it's it's going to take a long time to load and um, you know you want to compress your images whether it's manually or whether it's you have some kind of software or service that does it for you once you upload it to your server and then number 10 is minimal advertising so i know that you know you can make money using adsense and having sponsors where you have their ad, their ad on your website and that's all all well and fine but don't overdo it i know when i go to a site and there's just ads everywhere it just makes it it, it feels i don't know it just feels shady and just um it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel like a quality site so i'm not saying don't have ads at all but place them strategically and try to make it feel like they're not they're not actually ads. Um, and, and when I say that, I don't mean be deceiving, but just make it elegant, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say. All right, guys, so that's 10 tips. Hopefully this helps you out and you can keep these in mind next time you're creating a layout, creating a custom design. So that's it. Thanks for watching.